Hi, uh, welcome back. I have started my virtual machine. This is my IP that I have tested yesterday. So I'm logging in here as root. These are the installation prerequisites as we discussed in the previous lecture. Checking the THP status. It is enabled as you see always. Showing as advice. So let's disable THP. Now test it one more time. It's disabled. Same for this. And check the swappiness. It's enabled as you see the value 30 here. I'm disabling swappiness as well. It's disabled. So now install the small meta package from Couchbase. Download it. Install the meta package. So now install the Couchbase server. As you see here, uh, Couchbase server 662 going to be installed. It is trying to fetch the latest version. Yes, yes, yes. If you want to install any specific version, you can do that as well with this command. Yum install Couchbase server hyphen version hyphen build number. So installation is complete as you see here. This is installation using Yum. If you want to install Couchbase using RPM, you can do that. You have to download the RPM package with the wget command and you can install it with this command. So you can verify the installation from the UI. I will check the status. It is active and running. Now I will try to connect to the Couchbase cluster using this IP address and port number. 8091 is a non-encrypted port. 18091 is the encrypted port. I am able to see the Couchbase server setup wizard. If you are not able to get this page, probably firewall running on your server. You can check that system CTL status, firewall D. In my system it is not running. In case if it is running, you can stop it or you can access through the tunneling. I have configured the tunneling in my mobile XTERM application. Click on the tunneling. Let me show you how I added new SSS tunnel. The forward port give 8091. Remote server give the IP and the port number. Again give server IP one more time. Login user root and the SSS port. If you are not using any custom port, 22 will be automatically populated. Save it. So if you want to edit, you can edit this. See here 22 automatically populated. So I'm removing this as I have already one SSH tunnel open. Same way you can configure the tunneling via PuTTY as well. I don't have PuTTY in my system to show that. So in case if you are facing issues server setup visa in the browser, you can give it a try using this tunneling concept. So now if you want to add this node to an existing cluster, you can click on join existing cluster. You have to fill few details, the cluster host name or IP address. You can give any IP of the cluster. Provide the cluster admin user and admin password and select services you want to use on this particular node along with the disk path for each individual service. Now I'll be discussing about this. For now, I'll set up a new cluster. The cluster name can be anything. I'm giving as dev cluster password. Accept terms, accept the license as well as the usage information. Click on configure disk memory. If you want to see the nodes, the host name, you can give host name. If I want to see the nodes with IP, so I'm giving the IP address. If you want to use IPv6, you can check this. If you want to enable encryption, check this. Provide the disk path accordingly. So I'm going ahead with the default path. Since this node is hosted in my virtual machine where I don't have much resources, I'm not selecting all these services. I'm going ahead with the data, query and index service. Remember, query service don't use any memory. So this is an important point. Sometimes that can be asked in the interview as well. So in query service don't use uh, memory. It will use CPU only. So I'm reducing little memory for the index service. 256 is minimum. I believe same with data service as well. When you want to use index, it is always recommended to go with memory optimized. 
highly performant but requires careful attention to your indexer RAM quota. So what it will do, it will load the data, index data into the memory that will give us some performance benefit. You have to tune your indexer RAM quota accordingly. The important point here is if you want to change the index storage type later, it will be little challenging because to change the index storage, there should not be any index service node in the Couchbase cluster. So if you want to change the index storage later, you have to remove all the index service nodes in the cluster first, then change the index storage setting and then add the index service nodes. Click on save and finish. This is my dev cluster dashboard. As there are no data buckets, it is displaying this message. You can load some sample buckets. You can check this and click on load. I'm not going to do that because of the RAM limitation in my system. Servers, there is only one server right now. You can check your things from here, the OAS and the uptime, since when the Couchbase service is up and running, and you can check the quotas and the disk path. And these are the services up and running on this server. Group concept can be discussed later. CPU, RAM, I have disabled swap, but it is still showing some swap usage. That may be because of the very limited resources on the virtual machine. So you can check it one more time, whether swap is disabled or not. So it is disabled. This is all about how to install a coach based cluster in CentOS. I'll be going through all these items in the later videos. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.